manifest. Where yeah, there is truth, there is freedom. There is deliverance. The words say, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Lord, make your truth manifest that there shall be deliverance and freedom from every form of ignorance, from every form of bondage. And we shall all be blessed and once again give all the glory to you. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Do what no man can do. Blessed be your name, our Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Thank you very much. May the Lord bless and enlarge the course of your ministry. May the Lord increase you mightily. May you be a vessel of honor forever in the hands of the Lord. You will not fall, you will not falter. In Jesus' name. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's open the Bible. Good afternoon, church. Let's open the Bible to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. I'm going to be reading verses 1 to 2 and verse 13. Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verses 1 to 2 and verse 13. Now it shall come to pass... If you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Verse 13. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not be beneath if you eat the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you today and are careful to observe them praise the name of the Lord the title of this message is above only can you tell someone you are meant to be above only and if you are in Christ can you continue you are indeed above only. Amen. Praise God. Now, you know God is good. God is very, very good. And the Bible tells us, Hebrews chapter 11, that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. So God is good. Now, also in Romans chapter 10, verse 12, Romans 10, 12, the Bible says the same Lord over all, is rich and generous towards those who call him. The same God is rich and generous to those who call him. And uh, a, a very significant reward that God gave to those who are born again, that reward is that he positioned them to be above. Amen. Hello? Amen. That is a reward. A reward of being 
born again. And uh, when you look at the word, it's not just above, it said it shall be above only. Now, the word only that accompanies, me, that accompanies it means you will always be above. It talks about, you know, being permanent. So, you will be permanently above. Amen. That is where we belong. Amen. That is not where he will put us. That is where we belong. If we are in Christ. Amen. Now, to be above only has many implications. And I just like to go through some of them to us. You know, if we understand the word, what Jesus Christ was saying, by saying, you shall be above only. There are some things I want us to look at because I said it is for those who are in Christ. So everyone who receives Christ, everyone who is born again, now experiences four things. Four things. The first one is crucifixion. Everyone who is born again is crucified with Christ. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but it is no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. So everyone who is born again is crucified with Christ. Everyone who is born again has experienced death. Romans chapter 6 verse 3. Romans 6 3 says, Or do you not know that as many of us are, were baptized unto Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? So everyone that is, that is born again has experienced death. You can also look at Colossians chapter 2.20. Colossians 2.20 says, Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, it talks about if you died. So, everyone who is born again has experienced death. Number three, everyone who is born again has been buried. Romans chapter 6 verse 4. Romans 6 4. says, Therefore, we were buried with him. Through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead from, by the glory of the Father, so shall he walk in newness of life. So, everyone who is born again has experienced death. And lastly, everyone who is born again has also experienced resurrection. Romans chapter 6, 4 to 5. You can also look at Colossians 3, verse 3. You can also look at Ephesians 2 6. Verse 5 of Romans 4 of Romans 6 says, For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. And Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6 says, Ephesians 2 6, and he raised us up together and made us all sit together. In the heavenly place. Another word for being raised up is to resurrect. To resurrect. So everyone who is born again has experienced four things: the crucifixion, the death, the burial, the resurrection. Now, why is this important? Now, as salvation that Jesus Christ consummated hangs on these four things. That's Jesus. We know he was crucified. We know he died. We know he was buried. And we know that he was resurrected. And so, just as he did all this, everyone who is born again has also experienced that. Now, so, what can we, you know, make out of all this? We know Christ has resurrected. Nobody denies that. Where is Christ now? The Bible tells us Christ is at the right hand of the Father. Ephesians 1, 20 to 22. Ephesians 1, 20 to 22. I like this version. He said, He demonstrated this power in the Messiah by raising him from the dead and sitting him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every ruler and authority, power and dominion, and every title given, not only in this age. So Christ is seated in heaven. Did you watch? Did you not note that? He said, far above all principalities and powers. Christ is seated in heaven, far above principalities and power. Don't forget four things that Christ experienced. Crucifixion, death, burial, 
resurrection. Four things that every child of God has experienced also. Now, if we accept the reality of this four, the crucifixion, the death, the burial, the resurrection, we must accept the reality that we are also seated within in, in heavenly places. Hallelujah. We must accept the reality that we are far above powers and principalities. Amen. Are, you, are you with me? Yes. So when God said, it shall be above only, as you are in Christ, you are already above Amen. only. Hallelujah. Now, Christ is in heaven. He is at the right hand of the Father. He is not sitting alone. Someone is sitting with him. I am sitting with him. Thank, I thank God that you accepted that. I am sitting with him. Now, Colossians 3, verse 3 also makes it to itself. He said, for he died, and your life is eating with Christ in God. So, which means... Wherever Christ is, I am. Because the Bible says, my life is eating with Christ in God. So wherever he is, I am. So as he is seated at the right hand of the Father, I am here with him. As he is seated above principalities and powers, I am also there with him. In him. Above powers and principalities. Praise God. Now, when did God put me in that position? And how long did it take? Or how long does it take? When did, you know, when did I become, when did I get to that position? How long? Is it a journey of one day, two days, one year, three years, four years? What's the answer? The answer is, when did these four things take place? Those four things. When did it take place? The crucifixion, the death, the burial, the resurrection. All the four take place when someone gives his life to Christ. It's a miracle, it's a mystery. But so it's not a journey of one year. It's not a journey, oh, I have to be ordained to be a deacon. It's not a journey, oh, okay, I have to go to Bible school. It's not a journey, I have to be ordained a pastor. The moment someone gives his life to Christ, the miracle takes place. All these four he experiences and is positioned with Christ in him, seated above powers and pray and principalities. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, like I said, if I believe and accept the reality that I am born again, I don't doubt it. And I, I thank God for it. I must walk, I need to begin to accept, I need to begin to program my mind as well. That I am actually seated with Christ. I am actually above powers and principalities. I am in Christ. I am above principalities. I am above powers. I must accept therefore that Satan cannot oppress me. Satan cannot harass me. Because the one that I am above, or I am above cannot oppress me. The one you are above, somewhere the Bible says he that is above is above all. The one who is above. It's, it's a difficult thing to... That, that's the problem we have, you know, as, as, as well, as being human. We, we struggle with some things because the word of God is too big and is much more bigger than us. It's exceedingly bigger, so which is why our minds find we struggle to comprehend it. So, what we do is that the one we can comprehend with in the Bible, we... we we stay in that corner, we stay there. But now it's actually beyond. It's beyond. So which, which means we need to program our minds to accept the reality that if I am in Christ, I am above principalities and powers. I'm above past and principalities. So which means I'm above witches. Actually, I'm above witches. I'm above wizards. I'm above their powers. I am above they are plans. I am above Satan. Because Christ is above Satan. And I am in Christ. I am above Satan. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now I want us to just pause for a moment. You know, this is a very serious stuff. We talk about, well, you know, you know, there are places where they, are, they, they find it difficult to measure Satan. Because you know how 
how they reverence him, how they see his power. So believe me, it's a very, very serious stuff. But if you are in Christ, you should have no fear. Because Satan indeed is below Christ. If it's, if, if it's below Christ, he is below me. Hallelujah. It is not of me, like the Bible says in um, um, John chapter 1, verse 12, as many as received him to them gave him power to become the sons of God. He said, those who believe in his name, not according to the will of man. He is not according to what I desire. It's according to what he has done. Hallelujah. Now, I know that, you know, in a service like that, like this, you know, many, many people come, the word of God may actually not relate to everyone. It might be a mystery to everyone because we keep saying, if you are in Christ, and this is serious stuff, there are implications to being above Satan. There are, like I said, if I'm in Christ, I'm above Satan. I'm above. So Satan cannot harass me. Satan cannot oppress me. Now, and the world is coming out in reality. That's in reality, in reality. Is every one of us confident to actually say Satan can't harass me? Now, it's not because we don't believe, but it's probably because the spiritual reality of that hasn't taken place. That is why this is not a religious stuff. This is a serious spiritual stuff. And I want us to bow down our heads. Maybe the spiritual reality that will make you to really be in heavenly places has not taken place in your life. That is, let's say let's religion. You are not born again. If you are not born again, Satan will still harass you. Satan has the authority and the right to oppress you. And I want to sincerely give opportunity just at this moment. You like to experience, you like to have this experience. The spiritual reality to be in Christ, to indeed be above, above Satan, above his principalities. You want to give your life to Christ this moment. Please don't, don't be ashamed to, to signify so that you can be prayed with. And you can begin to walk and grow in that experience of being in Christ where you can now be in a position where you can challenge Satan. Because that is what being in Christ gives us the authority to do. Is there anyone, please? You'd like to give your life to Christ? Because we are going to pray some dangerous prayers. But these prayers will be meaningless if you are not in that spiritual position. So anyone, please? Please, you'd like to give your life to Christ. You, it doesn't matter how long you'll be coming to church. That's not what qualifies us to occupy that position. It's not, every, it's not because you're a member of Redeem that you occupy that position. It is because you are in Christ. Anyone, please? Okay, if there's no. I want us to make this declaration. I don't doubt that I am born again. Therefore, Therefore, I no longer doubt, I no longer doubt that, I that I am seated with Christ in heavenly places. I no longer doubt that I am above principalities and powers. Satan cannot harass me any longer. Satan cannot oppress me any longer. I am above in Christ. Just say that over and over again. I am above in Christ. I am above in Christ. I am above Satan in Christ. I am above principalities and powers. I am above witches and wizards. I am above wickedness. I am above forces of, of, of wickedness. I am above in Christ. Satan cannot harass me. I am above principalities and powers. I am seated with Christ in heavenly places. I am far above, out of reach of Satan. In Jesus' name, Amen. Second declaration prayer. Father, thank you for my being born again. Thank you for hiding me in Christ. Far above principalities and powers. Please give me the boldness and power to walk in this spiritual reality. Pray. Lord, give me the boldness and the power to walk in this spiritual reality. That I am above principalities and powers. Lord, give me the boldness. Give me the power from now, oh God, to walk and live in this reality.
reality that I am above principalities and powers. In Jesus' name, God prayer. Father, pour as your anointing upon me. Let me have the practical experience and manifestation of the spiritual reality in my day-to-day -day living. Pour out your anointing upon me, O oh God. Let me have the practical experience and manifestation of this spiritual reality in my day-to-day -day living. Pour your anointing, Lord. Pour your anointing, Lord. Pour your anointing upon me, O oh God. Let me have the practical experience and manifestation of this spiritual reality in my day-to-day -day living. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can have your seat. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now there are other dimensions to this, to being above. Remember, he said, it shall be the head and not the tail. It shall be above only. Now, because he has placed us above in heavenly places. Now, he does, he did something else. He mandated us to demonstrate it on earth. He mandated us. Matthew 5, 14 to 15. Matthew 5, 14 to 15. It says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Now, where do they put it? He's saying nobody puts lamp under. It's put on the lampstand. It's put above. So it means we are above sin. God is saying, don't hide your lamp. Hello? Don't hide your lamp. God has given you a lamp. He said, nobody puts it under the basket. It's put on the lampstand. Above. Where it will radiate light. Don't hide your lamp. Can you tell someone, don't hide your lamp. Put it on the lampstand. Don't hide your lamp. Amen. That is, like he said, let your light shine. Don't hide it. Let your light shine. Manifest righteousness. That's what Jesus is saying. Manifest righteousness. Because you are above. Lamp on the lampstand. Position above. See yourself as above sin. You are above. Position above. Second Peter chapter 1, 5 to 10. Second Peter 5, 1 to 10. He said, also for this reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and are banned, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus. Now, take note. He said, he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness, he has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. The person who eyes his lamb in the, under the baskets is short-sighted. He has forgotten he was cleansed from his sins. The lamp is meant for the lampstand above to shine. So, we are above petty things. Petty things, gossip. Believe, brethren, we are above. We are above nudity, you know, which, which the Lord, which the world is promoting. We are above that. Don't hide your light. Don't hide your lamp. We are above worldliness. We are above it. You know, I wrote sometimes ago. We have continued. To, you know, it, it delivered us from the world to place us above. But then we are running back to the world to embrace the world. You are above. It's like God takes someone up here and says, no, 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 I, I want to go there. You are above. Don't embrace the world again. You are above. Amen. We are above shady stuff. You know, all kinds of things, shady things happen. You know, be a man of integrity. Be a woman of integrity. Be known for integrity because you are above. Do not hide your land. 
Don't be associated with questionable people. You are above. Be distinguished. You are above. You must be different. Again, don't hide your land. Amen. Amen. Now, another implication of being above. Being above means being responsible. Please, can you tell someone being responsible? Being beyond manner. I will explain. Being beyond manner. You know, God gave the children of Israel manner in the wilderness. Now, for you to understand, let's look at Joshua chapter 5, 11 to 12. Joshua 5, 11 to 12. The Bible says, And the end of the produce of the land on the day after the Passover, on living bread and part grain on the same very day. So they had now. Then the manna ceased on the day after they had eaten the priests of the land. And the children of Israel no longer had manna, but they had the food of the land of Canaan. Manna was free food. Now, why would God make provision as it were to cease? It was a time for responsibility. It was a time to start living. It was a time to start understanding there is time to have everything, time to plant. So it was time for them to begin to understand here, yeah, study season, plant in the season. And so when the sea of harvest come, you get harvest, responsibility. That is what we are called to, children of God. We are called to live responsibly. We are called to live beyond manner. It also represents maturity. You are called to maturity. God has called us to take control. God has called us to take responsibility. And it applies in all areas of our lives. In education, take control, take responsibility. When you are supposed to study, study. You know, that when, when you multiply nothing by a million times, it is nothing. You know, when you when you give no effort to, to, to nothing, even if the anointing comes upon it because there is no, it, it amounts to nothing. So take responsibility. Take responsibility. Be responsible in all areas, in our careers. Be responsible. In spiritual life, that's why Paul said, study to show thyself diligently approved unto God. Study. Because there can't be growth without diligent study in the kingdom. God is saying, do what is required. Do it. Do it. Work, study, pray, read the Bible. We are called to a life of responsibility. A promise to bless whatever we set our hands upon. So, if your hand is upon nothing, is upon nothing, nothing is blessed. If your hand is upon something, then what you lay your hands upon will be blessed. Praise the Lord. Now, it means, because we say we are called to responsibility. To be responsible, like when God, when manna ceased, it, it means they will recognize that there needs to be planning. Because that's what a responsible life does. You plan. You don't just leave everything to chance. So, there's a time for planning. It requires planning. It requires understanding. It requires wisdom. Because in the land, when they got there, they would recognize that there were so many crops. And all those crops did not have different growing pattern. So they need to apply wisdom to know how to plant and where to grow. So it requires wisdom. Which is why our most important need is wisdom. That's why God said, wisdom is the principal thing. So it's something we should continue to pray for. Lord, give me wisdom. Lord, increase me in wisdom. Take me, be, take me to a high level in wisdom so that we can be very, we can become very fruitful. We can become very productive. The life of someone who is above only. That's closing now. It's a life of responsibility. Acting and living responsibly. You are a man. Act and live responsibly. Responsibly. In a marital life, you act and live responsibly. As a child, you act and live responsibly. Paul said, "All things are expedient, but all things are not are not love. All things are lawful, but all things are not advantageous. They are not beneficial. That is responsibility. That is to take responsibility. Oh, there's no belief I do this, but I can't do that." 
because it is not beneficial. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not, it's not edifying. It doesn't add value to me. Oh yes, I can leave house, I mean, I'm an adult, I, I can leave house and go by 12, but no, I am I'm responsible. Thank you, sir. You know, I am above that level. I am above only. Oh, yes. I have a wife, I have children. I have children who look up to me. You, I walk and live by example. I am above that. That's the life that God has called us to. I pray that the Lord will release the grace, the strength, the power, and the anointing for us to begin to walk in the reality of what God has made us. Heavenly Father, let's just pray. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Lord, your word is true. Please, as I'm praying, be praying as well. Be praying as well. Be praying for yourself. That God, I want these things I want to walk in the reality of this. I want to walk in the reality of this. I don't want to hear it alone. I want to experience it. Even after living here, Lord, help me. Help me. Give me wisdom. Lord, pour the anointing upon me. Lord, give me the boldness and the power. Lord, in the name of Jesus, release the grace. Release the power upon every one of us. Let us begin to walk in the manifestation of this. Let us begin to experience the spiritual reality of this. Give us the boldness and the power to walk in it, to experience it. In the name of Jesus, release wisdom upon us. Help in every single we have been acting irresponsibly. Lord, I pray that you put an end to every form of irresponsible living in our lives. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you for placing us above. We are above and we shall remain above. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.